Do you have a portable diesel heater for your RV, tent, camper, truck, camper shell, whatever? Are you an outdoorsy person and you need really simple but durable portable power? You're gonna to wanna to check this out. Hey everybody, this is Scott from Texas Prepper Projects. So a couple of weeks ago, I reviewed a Bouge RV portable diesel heater. And most people don't realize that diesel heaters need power to run the pump and the igniter. So of course, YouTube starts offering me other videos about other diesel heaters. And I came across a product that really just blew my mind. So there is a company over here that makes a water resistant, I'm gonna uh, hesitate to call it waterproof battery. And it's designed for diesel heaters and other outdoorsy stuff. And it is incredibly expensive. So let's build one because it's not that hard. What we've got here is a 3800 case from Harbor Freight. I always get them in orange so that way I can find the things. They are usually $39 right now. There's a coupon makes them $29. So this is one of the bigger ones, unfortunately. Inside here is a 100 amp hour mini lithium iron phosphate from my buddies at WattCycle. Thanks, Watt Cycle. Um, I love this because it's really super thin. And as you can see, it fits in here just perfectly. Unfortunately, it's about a quarter of an inch too big to fit in the 2800 case. So I had to go to the 38, but there are some advantages to that. I left the foam along the sides to give it some shock absorbing and to you know stop it from sliding side to side. So this is a beautiful, beautiful fit. I love this. Now, one of the great things about building your own stuff is obviously you have infinite ability to customize. Most people will just put binding posts. So these are M8 binding posts. So you're essentially just moving the terminals from here to the outside and now uh, you've got a case to kind of protect the battery. And then I've got wire jumpers. These are like a 12 gauge to jump from here to the terminals. And then over here, I do have a fuse uh, inline, smart idea. Um, just in case something shorts, you can protect with the fuse. Or a circuit breaker would probably be a better idea if you're out really remote and you don't have any spare fuses. This is an automotive blade fuse. But anyway, so... I'm using M8 binding posts and a fun little hiccup is that you have to put them low enough to get underneath the clips. You can see this second hole here because I put them up too high, thought I was done, and then tried to close the clips and couldn't because my binding posts were in the way. Oops, so learn from my mistake. But... I was when I was prototyping something similar for a outdoor water pump for my water barrel, I had a couple other things that I was playing with. First, this is an SAE chassis mount connector. It's the two pin trailer plug. And you can get those and they would have fit right down here. So I could have used a step bit and drilled a hole and then put some little bolts and used this if I wanted something a little more durable and also so that way the red black is connected into uh, you know one terminal into one connector. So that would have fit perfectly fine right here. I do not consider this waterproof, maybe water resistant, mostly just durable. If you wanted to elevate this a little bit, there are lots of different waterproof connectors. And here's another one. This is a little uh, round terminal. And then you've got a male plug that goes into here and has a collar that screws down. And now, and there's an O-ring. So now we have a much more durable connector that locks. So if you're an extreme outdoorsy person or you just want something really, really, really tough, I would suggest this. Um, these are plastic made in China on Amazon, like everything these days. Um, in a former life, when I used to make uh, law enforcement surveillance equipment, 
we used all metal two pin connectors from Mauser called Harwin, if I remember correctly. I'll see if I can dig them up, but they were tough as nails. There will be people who will say, well, use an Anderson connector. Uh, I am a ham radio operator. I don't really like Andersons. I find them kind of difficult to use, but if you want to roll that way, cool. Cut out this little insert, put your Anderson connector in there, and off you go. All three of these connectors are round, and so the M8s were a quarter inch drill bit. These were done with a step bit piece of cake. Now, this is just 12 volts. So what would you use this for? You could use this, for, like I said, for your diesel heater. You could use it for an RV refrigerator. If you're going back woods camping and you need a, you know, like a week's worth of runtime. Uh, one of these days it's going to get warm. It'll be summertime. So if you have a ceiling fan or something like that in your pop-up camper, if you check out my summer heat wave pool cabana video from three or four years ago, we've got a 12 volt fan, uh, 12 volt rope lights even. So any kind of accessory stuff that um, you want to be kind of away from power, you know, we've got a whole lot of power in this case. This 1200 watt hours with this beautiful little handle, just dead simple. Now there is no inverter on this. That's not what this is for. But people will say, well, what about charging my phone and stuff like that? My strong recommendation is if you really want USB charging, buy a standalone USB battery for 20 or 30 bucks like this. Much better option. Having said that, if you just want the flexibility of having that capability, there are a bunch of different things out there that will do that. So there are a million different options on Amazon of these cigarette socket, USB chassis mount, panel mount adapters, comes with wires. So I could absolutely take this, plug this into the back of here, put some little ring terminals on here, and be able to connect it onto my M8s, and I would have cigarette socket and USB ability without compromising the integrity of the case any more than it already is, because I would just disconnect that and store it in the empty space to the side of the battery, which is really convenient. So there we go. Now I've got USB and cigarette socket capabilities. The other thing people will ask about is charging or recharging. So let's talk about solar, because everyone wants to talk about solar, particularly like with diesel heaters, which don't draw a whole lot of power, um, and you're mostly running it at night. This is a Bacteria Power 10 amp MPPT charger, and this is water resistant. I don't know if I'm gonna call this submersible, but very durable. These are very inexpensive. They're like 30 bucks, not sponsored and they have the SAE terminals on them. So if you used this SAE pass-through on the side or on the top for your output, then you could use this to plug your solar panel into. You couldn't do them both at the same time unless you put two of these on the side, one for your power in, one for your power out. But really cool item, obviously really, really, really small, already has the wires built into it and just drop that along the side for storage. How about that? How super cool is that? So having extra room to put my charger and stuff like that is actually pretty neat. So now I've got solar capabilities. Obviously we have the AC charger. This is the watt cycle 20 amp, got ring terminals on it. So, all I gotta do is put it onto the binding post, plug it in, and I'll be good to go in five hours. Easy enough. Now what's great about the watt cycle is it's obviously tiny, so this is one of the mini 100 amps, and this version actually has Bluetooth in it. So again, if I am in a tent camper or a little RV, I can be monitoring the life of the battery, the capacity of the battery from my phone from inside where it's warm. So super cool, super convenient. 
Uh, also with the app, you can turn stuff on and off. So if you've got lights or whatever, you can use it as a little remote. So very neat. So really, really simple build. This took me about 10 minutes to put together, uh, just figure out which one of the three or four options of connectors you wanna use, drill some holes, make two little jumper wires, screw it into the battery terminals, and you're ready to go. I've got a discount code down below that'll save you some money on the battery and the accessories, and I'll put links to all these parts and pieces that I'm using. So thanks everybody, hope this was helpful. Uh, drop a comment down below, let me know what you think. Thanks.